another late night. It's uh, it's getting. We're past the halfway mark of the Lexington sale. <laughs> we're getting almost full. Uh, almost full. What a great night! I, I'll tell you what. Um, you know, you guys know. After the first night, it was so stressful, and I was so deflated that we didn't get any of those top top horses that I was so excited to to, to get. Uh, it was. It was an upsetting feeling. And, you know, it, it didn't take long after you look at the way day one went for us, after you look at the way day two went for us. Things were looking good. But I'll tell you one thing. Um, day three was definitely a, a watershed moment in uh, in our Lexington experience this year. Man, um, you know, I was just talking to Daniel. He's leaving tomorrow to go back to Australia. You know, my wife turned in early. I had talked to a number of people all day. We were all looking at all the horses and buying and bidding on horses. And it was only really now, or, or not that long ago, I got a chance to look back at the entire sale. Now, I was going to go through, in fairness, I was going to go through the uh, just today. Just today. And, and I will get to that. But I think it's important to take a look at a number of things that took place. And I'm going to get to those right now. Now, first off, um, the overall... Um, I was so surprised. I told you that I was so shocked about our day one acquisitions of the chapter sevens. I just didn't, in my mind, it didn't make sense that we were, well, that we could do that, that we were able to buy two very quality chapter sevens from reputable consigners with good pedigree for that kind of money. And, and just looking back quickly, you know, guys, we bought a chapter seven Philly first fall from an explosive matter mare. Now, explosive matter is a Cantab Hall. Cantab Hall mares are the most sought after mares. One of them, some of them in, in racing and have been for quite some time. So this was a, a first fall out of an explosive matter mare who is a sister to Cedar Dove. And you see when doves cry and then he's one of, one of the best trotting fillies mares in, in the world right now. She beat Atlanta in Ohio the other and has beat Atlanta before. A fantastic mare, her own right. Now, let's see what she's got now. When Doves Cry now has $1.9 million made. $1.9 million made. This family is simply jam-packed full of pedigree. And even more on top of that, this individual, this is a, one of the biggest Chapter 7s I've seen in quite a while. She's a big, big girl. So to pick her up early on day one for what we did, the 70000 we paid for her, Especially looking back at how those sale averages have climbed now, again, for Chapter 7, it's really shocking. And only outdone by what we did next was to buy the Chapter 7 Colt, whose two-year-old sister now is a mark of 53 and 275000 made. Mama Sita. It's, it's really hard to believe that that's how we kicked the sale off. Now, that was overshadowed on day one because we didn't get Tall Dark Stranger's brother. We didn't get... Beach Glass's sister. We didn't get those horses. So the fact that we did this was overshadowed in my mind. My take on the thing was it was overshadowed. I was frustrated. It's okay. We did. You guys are going to hear about some private horses that we picked up. One that is coming home with us, a Father Patrick that was a buyback on day one from Diamond Creek. Another one was purchased. You guys saw the stable purchased a horse later on, but that, that horse is mostly sold out as um, the people that bought Tactical Mounds last year, the partners that bought Tactical Mound. Mounds wanted another filly that had breeding potential. This filly later on that we had bought, I'll, get, I'll jump back to that right now, um, was Royal Emeralds. This is a filly I liked. She was a green shoe out of... Um, out of a mare, out of an RC royalty mare. But that mare is a dam of Durhamville. Durhamville's not a bad horse. Pretty decent horse. But you also see in that pedigree, royalty for life, Texas photo, all through there, all speed and money. Good looking filly. I would say above average sized filly. And uh, just what seemed to be a slam dunk. But that horse is coming to us. Very few shares of her will be, will be available. Um, the... the buy back. I don't know how many shares of that horse would be available. And then we had a horse sent to us to train. Yes, we still do that. We had a horse sent to us to train by Dr. Rucker and his wife, Green Tree, 
uh, green tea, sorry, uh, dual eligible green shoe filly, um, half sister to Simon, and in the second name uh, is Charmed Life. Now, we'll get to that pedigree. Uh, we'll get to that pedigree in just a moment. Um, so we'll jump back again just for a second. We talked about the two. We talked about the get this up here we talked about the two chapter sevens the third one was that buyback that horse will be coming to him that's number 82 activation he'll be coming home with us uh number 110 now this was the most expensive horse we ever bought but again on a day when we thought we were looking at maybe something a little more expensive even uh it was lost on me even i was very optimistic but even looking at the entire package of punch the clock the residual value what they're worth what they should bring, what they could bring. Uh, punch the clock at $180,000 as a broodmare is almost worth that. To have that safety net underneath for us is very, very, very important. And punch the clock as, as having a world champion mother and a world champion brother, again, that safety net isn't going anywhere. So punch the clock, pretty easy to make a purchase. Not only is the expectation she'll be herself, hopefully, one day a world champion, but if she's not, we have that added history in this pedigree already so the really the concerning part yes we have to shell out the money to buy her but at the very worst um you know that might be somewhat paid back down the road as a broodmare and then we get into uh day number two sully's landing i thought was a pretty easy purchase yes this is all ontario blood but very good blood very quality quality animal and a very good looking horse again don't take my word for it. I mean, you'll be able to see these horses all year long. Go back and look at the videos and explore the pedigrees yourself. I'm only giving you a, a, a rough a rough going over here with these horses. Sully's Landing, just a, a very, very nice colt. Pickpocket. Where else can we buy a dual eligible Kentucky and New Jersey colt by Walner? And in the second dam is international money for $47,000. I just don't think you're going to, you're going to look, you're going to listen to me say this and say, Anthony, there has to be wrong, something wrong with these horses. You will get your chance to look at these horses. But for right now, we did the videos of them. I wanted everybody to look at what's going on with these horses. Pickpocket is a very correct, very good looking horse that in my estimation was grossly underpriced. That was number 176, Pickpocket. Pequero Blue Chip, I, I loved everything about this horse. This was a horse I was drawn to. Now, in fairness, Amy picked this horse out first. She said, listen, we got to go up to Blue Chip right now. I want you to look at a couple of horses. I want you to look at a Father Patrick that is up there. And Amy was never a huge Father Patrick fan. She said, I found a horse I want you to look at. So we went up. Sure enough, gorgeous horse. I talked to Scott Zeron that night at the sale. He was driven two or three of the horses in the front dam. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Union Forces, who's now been exported uh, somewhere in Europe, he said it's just the most beautiful horse to drive. Very, very nice horse to drive. Really, really nice horse. But again, what we're looking for, those two-year-old marks also, Union Forces, Berkery J. Uh, again, Mando Blue Chip. I'm looking at this too for the first time um, since the sale. And you see all these horses with two-year-old marks. Now, the cool thing about this too is when you look in the second dam, it all branches off, right? You have real cool Sam. Broadway Donna, Broadway Schooner, Flawless Bluestone. These are all really, really nice horses that have their only their own family branches and trees here. So as I said to somebody today, not only did we get a quality animal with a quality pedigree, but we got a really, really good family tree in Vaquero Blue Chip. Just a, a really nice horse. I'm not going to go out and tell you, oh, he was disgustingly underpriced. No, I actually had him priced at 55000 That was my buy price on him. We got him for fifty. And I still think he was a very, very good purchase. Very happy with him. 218 Arson. Now, I had said to Daniel tonight, we talked about it, all about this horse the last two days. I said, Daniel, you've seen everything now. You've seen the pedigrees. You've seen the sale. You tell me if I'm wrong. Is this not more than an $85,000 pedigree? We have a world champion. What looks to be a two-year-old this year on our way to being some sort of champion. She's the second best pacing filly. I believe the second best pacing filly in North America. And you also have a horse that went in 48-1, timed in 47-4, made over half a million dollars in this pedigree. I mean, and if you say, well, yeah, that's pretty good. All right. You can look at the second dam, who's old enough, All-American Ingot, 50-3, 1.1 million made. LCB, 
$906,000 made. All American Inca, 48 and 2, $889,000 made. All speed, all money in this jammed into this page right here. Arson, he was just worth a lot more than this, especially given what has gone on at that sale right now. Arson is worth a lot more than, than the 85000 we paid for him. Now, both, um, both, uh, where's our girl at? Both Punch the Clock, the Tactical Landing Philly, uh, King of the North's sister, and the Pacer are going to be outside the buckets. Well, the Pacer was never supposed to be in a bucket anyway. That was Daniel that asked me to buy him a quality Pacer. I did. I just didn't have to pay three or $400,000 for him. As with starting point right now, at the sale in Lexington, October 2022, heading into his 2023 rookie season, I think we got a very, very good pedigree. We just got it for a quarter of what we possibly had to pay for it. And a quarter might be a bit of a stretch, obviously. But twice as much isn't. We looked at a couple of horses today. One went for 190 had nowhere near the pedigree or look that this horse had. Just regardless of how you chop it up, he was a good purchase. So you have the two horses that are going to be outside the bucket. Now we're going to get to another horse in a minute that's a little trickier also. 361, uh, that was the first day. Now, I told you guys in the the opening broadcast, right, uh, there were two horses I was looking at. I started off the day with a three-quarter brother to what the hell. This is a three-quarter brother to a world champion, to a horse that's been a sire. A number of horses we have are by what the hell and have been by what the hell and will continue to be by, by what the hell. I'm not in love with the breed because they're stubborn, but they're tough. They're tough animals. I'll give them that. They are tough. What the Hill himself, very nice horse. I want you got one point what made here? $1.263 million made. Would have been a lot more had he not got tossed from the Hamiltonian. Would have been 1.7. Uh, very, very nice horse. Second damn Majestic Sun. Third damn Mr. Easy. Three champions right there in the entire pedigree. I shouldn't have to even talk to anybody about uh, about the three-quarter brother to what the hell being worth $25,000. I shouldn't have to really even make an argument. In fact, I'm done talking about it. I believe that was a very good purchase. Uh, now, the next one was one I had mentioned two horses on the opening, on the live broadcast before the sale started. I told you I wanted Militant. We got Militant. This is a dual eligible New Jersey, Kentucky, six pack Colt who is a brother to Charmed Life. Very nice horse. Charmed Life is a very good horse. How good was she? Well, she went in 52 and 2 and a 5 8 and made 1.5 million. That's how good she was. Uh, again, strong family, but a really, really good looking individual here at $23,000. This was a horse I said I was looking at today on the air before the sale ever started. Now, if you were paying very close attention, the other horse I said, I can't remember the filly's name, but she was a muscle mass out of preferred equine. You don't take my word for it. Go back and watch the live broadcast. We got her too. Now we had to pay a lot more for her. Now, the funny thing about this filly, I think I'm going to take her and put her in the Ontario bucket. Reason being, this is a quality animal also, and our Ontario clients want Ontario horses. We want good horses. We want quality horses. I know the buckets, there's still lots left of them, and we're still getting things done in Ontario, but I am 100% positive you guys will sell those buckets out, as you should. And Hallie in the Clouds probably should help. This is a muscle mass first full, uh, first full from a Cantab Hall mare. Now, I loved Hallie in the Clouds for a lot different reason than everybody else did that was bidding on her. I had Blake come up and tell me he was bidding on her. Ben Bayergeron come up and tell me they were bidding on her. Of course they were bidding on her. She was an absolutely stunning filly. Now, they're looking at Burndall in the second dam. Burndall made 874000 Conway Hall. You know, very, very good, very, very good mare. What I'm looking at, she didn't make, well, she made less than 10% of what her sister did. Just look below Burndall and you'll see why I liked her. This is Path of Totality's family. And <clears throat> Path of Totality is never going to be known as being a monster. She's never going to be known as being a world champion. She was fast. Very, very fast, Philly. I love this mare. Kept her. We have her. She's our mare. She's in full to Father Patrick right now. That's what drew me to this 
to this filly. Not the $874,000 that Burndall made. Not Dig That Girl who made two seventy five dollars in the third dam. Not the first full out of the can tab. It was our girl, Path of Totality, that drew me to four fifty eight. dollars So in the live broadcast, I couldn't remember Hallie in the Cloud's name, but I knew it was a muscle mass at a preferred equine. This was the other horse. Now, <clears throat> I think it's only fair to put this filly into the Ontario bucket. One of them, I guess the the, the first bucket. It's only fair. Um, why shouldn't we? I mean, she is an Ontario bred. She is going to race in Ontario. So it makes sense to put her in that, that, that first bucket. That's only fair. So Hallie in the Clouds will be our first entry into the Ontario buckets. Now, there's tons of shares left and lots left in those Ontario buckets. We are going to be looking at Ontario horses tomorrow. We're almost full up. So we get a couple of Ontario breads. They're probably going in the Ontario buckets tomorrow also. But this is our first one of the season. This is an extremely good-looking filly. Just go, again, go look at the video. Go look at the pedigree. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Hallie in the clouds, $87,000 was as simple a purchase as I could have made. Um, next, we had Kent, uh, Dr. Rucker had sent us 483 Now, she won't have any shares for sale. She is a green shoe filly, uh, Pennsylvania and Kentucky bred. Again, look who shows up in the second dam, Charmed Life. That is the family, the family of our other horse, uh, Militant. Now, go look at 411, Militant. The first dam is Christina M., who's Charmed Life's family. This is the brother to Charmed Life. Now, you look at the next one, 483, it's out of a sister to Charmed Life. So, the exact same family tree. This one is out of an Andover Hall mare. That one was actually out of Christina M., so she'll be joining us also. And then the next one, here's a, a very, very cool story. And it, exactly how it played out to me. Uh, Lovely Lakewood, Lonely Lakewood, I like this horse a lot. Father Patrick, dual eligible, Pennsylvania, Kentucky filly. Now, you have Cameron Hall in the third. Second dam's a little weak. But the first dam has Selfie Queen in it. Now, Selfie Queen, so Selfie Queen took a mark of 51-2 and two as a two-year-old. She's a Muscle Hill. This is a Father Patrick. Two very different sports cars. Two very different engines. But um, Selfie Queen was an extremely fast filly to begin with. Now, has a beaten time of 50 and 4. Seven wins now for Selfie Queen. And $446,000 made. This is her half-brother by Father Patrick. Now, it's so weird. I'll tell you how, how cool it was. The underbidder of this colt was the Tactor family. And I didn't, I asked Jimmy and, and uh, Nancy after, I said, why did you stop at 37000 Because we bought her for forty. I was thirty five. Somebody bid 37 That's a me trick. But it was cool that, you know, Jimmy and Nancy went to 38 and I had to go, or 37 and I had to go to, to 40 So two questions. Why did you stop? And why did you stop? And and he said, listen, I, I love the family. I love Selfie Queen. But these Father Patricks take a lot of patience sometimes. And, you know, we have a lot of horses coming in. I wanted this one. I thought, I, I assume what he was saying was he wanted this one for himself. And he had priced her. He thought she was worth around 40 I landed on 40 And he held the line. And that is cool that a guy like Jimmy Tactor and, and, a, and a, you know, a, a lady like Nancy Tactor's daughter drew a hard line in the sand and stuck to it. It's impressive. And uh, it was really cool. I thought it was really neat. So we got Lonely Lakewood, and I got the distinct feeling. I'll tell you this. Um, now, Jimmy Tactor's system, my system for rating horses, is remedial, caveman-like when it comes to it. It's virtually yes, maybe no. Virtually, in a sense. Jimmy's is much more complex I look down and he shows me, he says, I gave this horse a two plus. I said, okay, well, what the hell do you want me to do with two plus? What do you want me, to, what does that mean? He goes, it doesn't get much better than two plus. I said, Jimmy, stop in at 37,000. <laughs> you know what I mean? He said, you know, I feel good right now, but you broke my heart on day one <laughs> running over me with the tall, dark stranger called. He said, well, that's our horse, right? He said, listen, they're all worth what they're worth. I gave this horse a two plus and, and we stopped it at 37 and you know, good luck with the filly. I think she's a very, very nice filly. I was floored. 
you know, it's, it's pretty cool to get to talk to, uh, you know, the, the people that you're well behind and that you're trying to catch up to someday. It's always nice to, to talk to them. And um, the fact that he was the underbidder and or him and Nancy and, and his wife, Christina, that they were the underbidders. Um, and the fact that we got the Philly is pretty cool. So Lonely Lakewood, um, not much more to say. Very quality family. The sister's a monster. A little bit of a loon. But a bit of a monster. And I love I love this Philly, Lonely Lakewood. Next was another easy one that Amy picked out also. Another horse from Blue Chip. Um, Victory Blue Chip. This was a international money. Out of a sister. First foal from a Trixton mare. Who was a sister to world champion Queen Serene. I uh, I don't really know what else to say. I don't think there is anything else to say. Muscle King in the third dam. I mean, what do you want me to say? She's out of a sister to Queen Serene. <laughs> she went for $25,000. He's a very nice colt. Pennsylvania and Kentucky dual eligible. Just a quality looking animal. We, we've been trying to buy the international monies. Wasn't that easy. The ones we wanted actually went for pretty good money. This was one that I thought would bring a little higher. I probably would have went to 35 or 40 on him. But luckily, uh, Victory Blue Chip with a K. A little hooked on phonics there. Victory Blue Chip, $25,000. Very, very happy with Victory Blue Chip. And then uh, the last horse we got on the day was was uh, bought by a couple of clients, that, the same people that bought Tactical Mounds last year. They're going to retain up to 80% of, of uh, the filly. There will be some shares available, but they bought her to race her, keep her, and breed her. And uh, lucky to have uh, both of them. Uh, very, very nice people. So um, there is three days down. Three days down. What, what's the count at here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen, but uh, three of them are, are being pushed to the sale. We are to the stable. We have bought thirteen horses now uh, at Lexington. Most of my focus tomorrow will be on Ontario. Um, we'll see how that plays out. I know that Pat and a number of other Ontario clients, I, I get your, all your emails, don't worry, um, have sent me um, a lot of questions. I, I was nowhere near the underbidder on the Chestnut Resolve today, by the way, Pat, but uh, most definitely was bidding on him. I like the Colt a lot. And uh, a number of horses selling tomorrow for Ontario. So that's our sale so far in a nutshell. Now tomorrow, because we have bought so many horses and we are getting saturated as far as financially, uh, as, as far as the financials go for the stable, uh, for the sale in Kentucky for the stable, um, I think I can begin tomorrow now to assemble those buckets, both the bucket A, uh, partnership A and partnership B. Um, as I said, I don't know what to do with the, the premium package just yet. I think I'm going to send an email out to all of you. If you are part of the premium horse package, I'm going to send an email. You will get first opportunity to buy shares in um, King of the North Sister. I, I just didn't think it was fair. At the point when I bought Punch the Clock, when I bought that filly, I thought that that filly would easily be outside of the buckets. We would buy a horse for 150 to accommodate that um, to accommodate that that partnership um, but I wasn't just going to go out and spend the money I didn't see a horse we'd bid on some horses the horse I told you today uh, Alfa Romeo we were the underbidders on him I went as far as I could on a number of horses but just I just felt that I wasn't forcing it it would happen or it wouldn't and I highly doubt it'll happen on day four I haven't combed through it it's unlikely that there's a six figure day four horse but as we sit here and talk um, although punch the clock will be outside of the buckets because I don't want to twist anybody's arm and say well you know do you want to put a little bit more in if you guys want to put in the money for the for, for, for punch the clock great but I don't want anybody to feel pressure it's unfair uh, to expect that want that or demand that of anybody so at the end of the day I'm going to make it as easy as I can for everybody we got a ton a ton of quality quality animals on paper and from what I could see you guys know how I am it's it's how the horse is, right? It, it's how the horse looks. The pedigrees, you know, the videos, they all lead you to the animal. But that animal has to be the one. Every single time that the hammer drops, you know, there's a, a computer in my head saying, this is what, you know, Scott Zeron said to me last night, how do you price a horse? Because he looked down and I had a horse priced at 37000 
He goes, hey, how, do, how do you price a horse? So there was another gentleman there that, that grades horses for the sales. I just happened to know him and talk to him. He's sitting there. I said, Mark, how do you grade a horse? What do you mean? I said, when you look at a horse, it'll take you a couple of minutes to get a final verdict. But within the blink of an eye, you've kind of got a rough idea of what you think that horse will be, right? He says, absolutely. I said, I assume it's like on an A, B, C or a one, two, three system. He goes, yeah, A, B, C. I said, so immediately you know if it's an A, B, C. And within a couple of minutes, you know if it's an A plus, A minus, B, whatever. He said, 100%. I said, that's kind of what it's like. I look at that horse. This is what I would pay for that horse. And I don't know where that number might come from. But if I'm focusing and paying attention, it's a million factors. Some I don't even see. My eyes do. My brain does. But maybe I don't recognize it. When I look at that horse, that is what I believe it's worth. And that doesn't mean it's right. That doesn't mean that I'm right or I'm doing a better job than anybody else. But to me, that is what I'm willing to pay for that horse right there. A line is drawn in the sand. And if it's on one side of that line, there's a potential of it coming home with us. And if it's on the other side, good luck to the new buyers. And I think that was the easiest way to put it. I think what we did was bought an entire bucket full, buckets full, I guess, of, of quality animals. At what I would say was, I never went over on one of them. I can, you might say, well, hold on, punch the clock. Punch the clock was never necessarily meant for a bucket. I told everybody that. Punch the clock was purchased because at that particular moment, I thought we were getting a good deal on one of the most quality fillies in the entire sale. That's what I felt at the time. Looking back at how extraordinarily high some of the prices were, I agree, $180,000 for a tactical landing sister to King of the North that looked like she does. Yeah, I'm gonna stick to that. I'm gonna stick to that. So that's where we're at right now. As I said, I believe Hallie in the Clouds, that beautiful muscle mass fillies going in the Ontario bucket. Uh, Partnership A, I guess, is what they have them in the, in the, on the site as. Um, we'll move some of the, any more Ontario breads bought tomorrow. We'll move them into the buckets accordingly. I guess the way it's looking right now, if I'm, if my memory serves me, that first bucket is 250,000. So there's about 115 or 20 of it gone now. There'll only be another three or four horses in there, which is probably what people want. We'll probably have around 10 at the most Ontario breads and I think this is a good way to kick it off. This is a good flagship filly to kick it off. A beautiful muscle mass filly coming home with us. Um, as I said, punch the clock. It's going to stay outside. I'm going to reach out to the people that were in that premium package to begin with to see if they want in first and foremost. And they'll have their opportunity first and foremost. And then when it comes to the pacer, you'll see some of those shares start hitting the market uh, very soon. He's going on the open market. But Daniel did take, I believe, a quarter. I have to double check with him. and uh, Or maybe a half. And when we get that horse situated, we'll put the other shares up for you. He'll be the first one to actually hit the open market. That might be as early as tomorrow afternoon. So with that, I'll let you guys go. A uh, quick recap, as I said. I guess not quick. It's 28 minutes. But a quick recap of what's taken place so far. Um, just thoroughly, thoroughly pleased looking back on what we did and how we were able to do it. Very, very happy. Thank you all again for the participation and the confidence you put in me to buy these horses and bring them to you. I take it seriously. A lot of long days, but you know what? It's all worth it in the end. This is 2023 playing out in 2022 for us. So thank you again. We'll talk to you all soon. Hope you all had a great day. Take care.